morning. Yeah, please give the person beside you good morning. Tell the person beside you, I'm so glad you are my seatmate today. And one last time, tell the person beside you, I'm going to treat you for lunch. <laughs> hey, welcome to Victory. Uh, I hope you are excited um, to be in church today. And for me, it's always a joy for me to be able to see your beautiful and handsome faces. Just for me to see your excitement and your joy to be in the house of the Lord. You see, there's always value, there's always joy when the people of God would gather together and be in His presence. Again, where you're not here, not because of the church, not because of the pastor, but we're here for the name of Jesus. And I hope that uh, our hearts are really aligned to who God is and what He has intended for each and every one of us. But before anything else, before I get to the Word of God, uh, yesterday we had our discipleship conference. It was a powerful time together. Almost 200 of our leaders, volunteers, and interns came together to be equipped, to be aligned. And I want us to understand that God wants to use you. God never designed us just to sit comfortably on our chairs on a Sunday morning, but there are people that God has called us to reach out to. And understand today that God will use your gifts, your pain, your life experiences for His glory and honor. Excited ba kayo dun? Nagagamitin ni God yung heartbreaks mo, yung achievements mo, so that people would know God and for people to experience God. Tell the person beside you, gagamitin ka ni God. So we have to be reminded that God has a great plan and purpose for us. So we hope that, that by next year's Discipleship Conference, we hope that you could actually join and, and celebrate with us. Amen? All right. Um, anyway, I want to see you now. Um, I'll be preaching the Word of God later, but before that, I want to take this, this probably the next 10 minutes for us to pray after I present something that we will be doing as a church. Is that okay? You see, 2019, remember 2019? 2019, we pre-pandemic. Uh, remember, nung wala pang face mask, di pa tayo nag-face shield. Remember those days? And <laughs> the good old days somehow. But um, to 2019, around November and December, there was a series of earthquakes that took place here in Mindanao. Remember that? And there were times during the service, it would uyukizing the... The, you guys think the, 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 the city, and we're like, oh, what's happening? Should we go up or not? And there, were see, there was a series of, there were a series of earthquakes that somehow um, that made us think, are we still okay here? And so we had this, the, the place check, and we're okay here. But eventually, our facade, we found out that it was kind of um, not that okay because it started to, to, yun, to sink. Uh, so, basta medyo bumaba siya, okay? And so we decided to have it demolished. And then 2020, uh, that's when the, the demolition started. And then by 2020, guess what happened? Nag pandemic. Remember? And so during the pandemic, we had it demolished and we don't have an entrance. And so there are were, were some of you, honestly, when you think of Victory Davao, dito pa yung entrance natin. But that's not actually our main entrance. We actually had this grandiose, amazing entrance is just that it, because this is an old infrastructure we had it demolished and so uh, during the pandemic we were praying and what can we possibly do and so we started to have plans of really building a facade and as we planned out we've we've submitted our plans to what we call this to the city engineer's office and we're still waiting for their approval but here's the thing um first week first sunday of 20 23. First Sunday, so, um, I was informed that this place, yung parking space natin, and that part over there, there will be, uh, basically, may mag-rent na po dyan. They'll be renting out the building, they'll be doing something there, and then the parking will no longer be available for us. And so our landlord basically informed us that we can use this another property there for free, but there's actually a building, so we have to have it demolished. Okay, there's around 1,500 square meters that the owner is telling us, we can, you can use that, but you just have to have it demolished and, and use it. 
So I have the vision of probably having a car park there, a, bad, a basketball court, a badminton court, a swimming pool, and maybe a mall that we can build there. But kidding aside, this is what I want to uh, present to everyone. That we are praying and we are believing that by this year, we can build our facade and our parking area this year. And so this will be the picture of what our facade will look like. We'll have a student center, we'll have a, uh, we'll have a volunteer's lounge, we will have a lobby wherein you can probably um, buy coffee for a really cheap price. At the same time, this is a place where you can do discipleship and really bring more people to the Lord. And we are really excited for this because I believe that as a church, we get to have this opportunity for us to build this so that people, more people would get to know the Lord. And this is what I'm really excited about because as a church, we can come together and really build the house of God together. Okay? Tell the person beside you, we're in this together. And so, I want to present to you, Victory Davao, that this is where we're headed. And we're currently raising 7 million pesos for us to be able to build our facade and our what they call this, our parking space, future parking space right over there. Tabi lang din talaga ng, ng church natin. Okay? And at the same time, I want us to understand that we're also, our church in Victory to Real is also expanding. So we're currently in, in a conversation wherein we've been moving from a small place and then we're moving to Gaisano Mall of Turil. So please pray for us as we continue to expand. And one day, hopefully, we can also do something for our church in, in Mintal and our future locations in Lanang, in Buhangin. Yeah. Are you excited, man? Yeah. And so, here's, I just want to read this in 1 Chronicles chapter 22, verse 5. It says here, For David said, Solomon, my son, is young and inexperienced, and the house that is to be built for the Lord must be exceedingly magnificent. Of fame and glory throughout all lands, I will therefore make preparation for it. So David provided materials in great quantity before his death. Now David, his heart was to actually build the house of the Lord. But God said, no, your hands is full of blood. That's why I want your son to build it for me. But David said that I'm going to make preparations because the house of the Lord must be great and, and must be magnificent. Last part says here, so David provided materials in great quantity before his death. David understood that he's not going to live forever. That's why he wants people to experience the greatness and the presence of God. So the thing that he can do is to prepare it. Maybe for some of us, our participation is to prepare so that for the generations to come, to know God and worship Him. Amen? And so how can we how can we be involved? Three things that we can actually do. First is pray. Let's really pray of how, how, God wants us to, how God wants to use us and how can we can participate. And after you pray, take the time to pledge as well. Lord, how much uh, can I participate? How much can I give? And Lord, I want to step out in faith because I know the people will know you as I give. And lastly, give. Okay? Give. And, and I want to invite everyone today that, that more than just us going to church, let us really participate. And what I want us to do right now is I want us to take the time to pray. Because this project is too great that means I'm, we're thinking about it, it gets overwhelming like, Lord, where do we get the money? But God would always remind me, Jopet, it's my house and I'm going to build it. And so, I want to invite everyone, you might be thinking, Pastor, I'm still a student, what can I give? You know, before we can actually give, we have to pray. And so, what I want us to do right now as a church is to actually pray. Can we do this? Can we group ourselves into three to five? And I want us to take the time to really agree together. And okay, just group yourselves. And here are the things that I want us to pray for. Assign three people who can pray or maybe one people who can pray for everything. But let's group ourselves. Okay, let's group ourselves. Three to five maybe. And as you, you gather, here are the things that we can pray for. Okay, here are the things that we can pray for. Number one, 
pray for favor that our building construction permit will be released. So we have already submitted our plans, but we're still waiting for it to be released. Number two, pray for abundant provision for the building construction. We know that, uh, to be frank with you, we have so many plans. Plans of planting a church in Digos, pl uh, plans of planting a church in Kidapawan, plans of planting a church in Afghanistan. Who wants to go there? Okay. But the, here's the point. The mission is so big that we need, as a church, we need to come together and bring in the resources. So pray for abundant provision for the building construction. And thirdly, pray that our leaders and members will be committed to pray and give in this building project. Okay? So for the next five minutes, for the next five minutes, can we do this? Gather, okay? Meet people, gather, and then start praying for these three things. Go ahead.
Last one minute. Can we all stand up as we read the word of God? How among you are in faith of the things that God will be doing in and through our church? Thank you. Thank you for praying. We really appreciate that. Anyway, let's open our Bibles to Matthew chapter 27. Matthew 27 verses 45 to 54. Open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 27, verses 45 to 54. The Word of God says, Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabtani, that is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, This man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn into two from top to bottom, and the earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were open, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. Verse 54, when the centurion and those who were with, he, those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly this was the Son of God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you. Because on the day that you died, you gave us life. You gave us hope. And Lord, today as we read and learn and, and, and discuss and talk, Lord, about the miracles that you did on the day of your death, Lord, thank you, God, because we know that you are the God who is in control, the God, Lord, who already has given and purchased our freedom and victory. And so I pray for every one of us, may we realize and recognize and embrace, Lord, that you have already set us free. So Lord, may we walk in that freedom and may we walk in your ways. And Lord, we pray that you would be glorified in our lives. Holy Spirit, speak to every heart today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated, everyone. So it's Holy Week this week. I know that many of you, you have plans already. I've talked to some of you earlier and you have plans of really resting, celebrating, and eating benignit or benignit or benignit. <laughs> Whatever it is, I hope that you would realize this. Everyone listen up. That I hope we all recognize that we are called to live a holy life and not just celebrate Holy Week. Because the world will basically celebrate it's Holy Week. Let's be reminded of the cross. But what Jesus did was for us to live holy lives. Now, look at the person beside you. Is that person living a holy life? It's not for us to judge, right? But understand that because of the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, we can actually live lives that are holy and pleasing before Him. So we're starting this series on what we call the day death died. And this will be a two-week series and pag-usapan po natin what Jesus actually did on the cross, on the day that He actually died, the miracles that happened there. Now, let me share with you a very quick story of a time where, when my heart actually died. Ibang seryoso, parang anong nangyari, Pastor? There was a person that I loved so much. Naniligawan ko. 
Pangalan niyo Odi. This was 2006. We were students back then. And I saw Odi that she was so passionate for the Lord, so beautiful, really on fire for God. And I was like, wow, Lady Gama ko to. So I started to pursue her. And then in these months that I was pursuing her, Liga one trying to know her, she was really amazing. And I was like, Lord, I want to build my life with her. Advance on Gisip. And so I was pursuing her. But what happened was one day, I asked her, uh, Odds, let's, let's go out for dinner and let's watch a movie. But the very moment that I, I invite, we, we, we were having our dinner, it was kind of different. Alam mo yung, she was already praying about something. And I was like, okay, baka may pinagdadaanan. And so the moment that we entered the cinema to watch a movie, guys, trailer pa lang. I was like, what's, are you okay? Is there something wrong? And eventually, she told me about, you know what, Jopet, I don't think that this is the right season for us. I'm still a student. You're still a student. Yes, cute ka, cute ka, cute ako. But this is not the time for us. <laughs> and she just told me that, can we stop this? Because I know that this is not the right time for us. I believe that there is this proper time wherein we can really pursue whether time in the future or not, but this is not the right time. And I want us to honor the Lord in our season. And I was there, trailer pa lang. Umiyak na ako, I was really crying. Sabi ko, hati na kita pa uwi. And then, guys, trailer pa lang. <laughs> Hindi mo lang nakahalahati eh. or yung ending, yung credits, trailer pa lang. Sabi ko, hindi na kita pa uwi. So I was driving sa motor and then Odi, nakaangka siya, tahimik kami. And I started crying. <laughs> then Odi said, Pet, okay ka lang? No, oh, oh. And then, Pet, sabi mo na tayo, okay. Then we got into the side. And then, I, she, she removed, sabi niya, Pet, remove your helmet. Okay. Ah! I cried like a child. And she was saying, Pet, sorry, sorry. And that actually, be, that, that actually began into a journey of really encountering God and getting deeper with God. And I realized back then, I had plans of, Lord, this is what I want for a relationship. But guess what? God had something better. Now, many of us, when we think of God, our Savior, we have so many things in mind of how He's going to deliver us. Just like the people of Israel during that time, they expected Jesus to be a mighty warrior who would remove the, Roman, the Romans and defeat the Roman Empire, and now they would be a great nation once again. But Jesus had something in mind. It's not just to give them a kingdom, an earthly kingdom, wherein they would rule and reign and that they would be known to the people everywhere. But Jesus came for one specific purpose, for the kingdom of God to be established. And the very struggle that we have with sin and death, Jesus conquered it. And so the expectations that people were having, it was very different from what Jesus came to deliver. And on this very important day, the day that death died, Jesus had to go through suffering so that each and every one of us will experience the life that God has prepared for us. Now, in the passage that we've read, we've read here that Jesus was already hanging on the cross. He was there already. He was crucified. And if you look at the story, if you look at uh, history, some scholars would say that a person who would be crucified, it would take them at least six hours before they would completely pass away. And people who are crucified, and crucifixion was actually not a, a symbol of, of, of righteousness, but crucifixion was actually a symbol of punishment reserved for the most hideous criminals. Imagine Jesus, who was our Savior, He was crucified. And what people do not understand is that Jesus was not righteously, um, He was a righteous man, yet He was crucified. 
And in this story, we could see that God allowed Jesus to suffer so that we would experience the salvation that we do not deserve. Now, going back to the story, if you look at verse 45, it says here, Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. So in, in Roman uh, time, the sixth hour talks about 12 noon until 3 p.m. And imagine here, from 12 noon to 3 p.m., there was darkness. Some people would say, I Pastor, that's just an eclipse. Eclipse normally happen for minutes. But during this time, this darkness hovered around for three hours. And normally, if there is light, light will always conquer darkness. But during this time, when Jesus was hanging on the cross, there was darkness. And probably people were thinking, Gabi na ba? And I want us to understand that during this time when Jesus was crucified, this was also a, 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 a Passover feast. And Passover are normally celebrated when there is full moon. And when there is full moon, there can be no eclipse. But during this time for three hours, all the land was covered with darkness. Just looking at it, it was actually a supernatural, supernatural display of the power of God. Not only that, verse 46 says here, And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabtani. That is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You see, this is the first time recorded wherein Jesus called to his Father as my God, my God. Normally, when you read the Bible, you would read that Jesus would go to his father and call him Abba, Father. But during this time, he was saying, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And this was the very moment where Jesus experienced the full wrath of God, where he became the substitute for man's sin. And in his agonizing pain, wherein he was experiencing the fullness of the wrath of God because of the sin of men. Remember in 2 Corinthians 5.21, wherein God made him who had no sin to be seen for us. So we had to experience all the punishment, all the wrath of God for our sake. And this very moment, Jesus experienced this agonizing pain that he did not want to experience. And in this, very, in this very moment, there was this spiritual transaction that took place. And Jesus felt abandoned and alone. But it had to happen so that He would die for the sins of men. He became the Lamb of God who would take away the sins of men. And ito nakakatawa sa verse 7. Verse 7, and some of the bystanders hearing it said, this man is calling Elijah. So when Jesus was calling to his father, Eloi, Eloi, Lami, Sabtani, he was calling to God. Now while he was, saying, was, while he was calling Eloi, Eloi, ang sabi ito, verse 7, some bystanders, ano yung mga marites? Ang sinabi, Eloi, Eloi. Sabi nyo, uy, Elijah daw. So they were mocking Jesus. They were saying, uh, okay, let's see if, if, if Elijah would actually deliver him. Verse 48, And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with, with sour wine, and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. Verse 49, But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. I want us to understand here that no one actually killed Jesus. But the Bible says that he yielded his spirit and he committed his life, his, his life, his spirit to the Lord so he can die for the sins of men. He died on the cross without someone actually killing him. He willingly gave up his life. He willingly gave up his spirit to his father. Now we've read this passage and the very moment that Jesus yielded his life, his spirit to his father, it did, the story did not end there. In fact, there were, there were stories of supernatural miracles that took place that, that, that did not just change the history of Israel, but even our lives today. 
So I want us to understand that in the moment of Christ's death on the cross, the power of God was revealed. And the question is, how did God reveal His power when Jesus was crucified? The first thing that happened was this, the veil was torn. Okay, the veil or the curtain was torn. And siguro inisip niyo, Pastor, what's the, significant, what's the significance of the veil or the curtain being torn? You see, in Israel, this curtain or this veil in the temple plays a very significant role. In, in verse 51, it says here, the moment that Jesus died and He yielded His Spirit to the Lord, verse 51, it says here, and behold, and everyone listen to me, every time the Bible mentions the word behold, there is something important that we have to know and understand. And the Bible says here, and behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And so just to give us a context of our perspective here, in the temple, there are actually three areas in the temple. The first is what we call the outer courts. In the outer courts, this is where um, believers or the Jews would come to offer their sacrifices and this is probably the place where our uh, the priests would offer this, these sacrifices and they would they would uh, the, 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 the sacrifice, and they would offer it to the Lord. Now, in the inner court, that is the court of the priest, and this is where priests would do ceremonies. Now, in the uh, most inner court, we call it the Holy of Holies, or the most holy place. And in this court, this is where the Ark of the Covenant resides, and it symbolizes where the presence of God resides. And what puts the division from the outer court to the inner court to the Holy of Holies are actually two curtains that's very thick. And in the Holy of Holies, not everyone can enter there. Only the chief high priest can enter into the Holy of Holies once a year to represent the people to God. And listen to me, and if the, 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 the chief high priest has sin in his life and the moment he enters the Holy of Holies and there's sin in Sabuayna, he would actually die. So this chief high priest would have a, a rope and then there's a bell sa paanya because if the bell doesn't ring anymore, in short, patay na siya. That's how holy our God is. And for the, the, for the religious Jews, this is something so significant because the way they look at the Holy of Holies, this is where the presence of God resides. But on this very important day, the moment that Jesus died, the Bible says that the curtain was torn in two from top to bottom. Now, normally because this curtain is so high, if tao lang po yung magpupunit, mag magagaling po sa from bottom to top. But it was in this very moment where God Himself tore the veil. And now He's saying that my Son has already accomplished the mission that I have given Him. And in this very moment, that there is no longer this divide, this division, this wall for the people of God that instead of going to the temple for them to offer sacrifices to, to the Lord, now God is saying, this is no more. Because my son has already become that sacrifice for his people, my people, to actually experience my presence. That's why this was the first miracle. The veil was torn. And can you imagine the priests during this time? They were there in the inner courts and they were praying and they were worshiping. They were singing spiritual songs. And then the veil was torn. The curtain was torn. Imagine. Ano yung reaction nila? Parang, anyari. What are we supposed to do now? Like, the curtain is no more. So, where will the, the presence of God go? And this was actually the first miracle that took place. The second miracle was this. The earth shook. Sa na yung 
Kasi yung papa-renovate tayo sa harap, di ba? Because the earth shook. Verse 2, And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split. The very moment that Jesus died, the earth shook. And very, very interesting because even as the earth shook, the cross remained. It remained unmoved. And while thinking about it, what's the significance about this? I just realized that creation was in agony for their creator suffering. That as Jesus was being crucified on the cross and as He gave His life for the sins of men, the Bible says that the earth shook and creation was crying out for the death of their master, for the death and the suffering of their creator. And then the third thing that happened was that the dead resurrected. The dead resurrected. And this is very interesting because if you look at the Bible, we could see that days before Jesus was crucified, Lazarus was the first one who actually, re- who, 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 Lazarus was the first one who rose up from the dead. And the Bible says here that the very moment that Jesus was crucified and after three days he resurrected, there were others who also resurrected. The Bible says here in verse 52, the tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep, those who died, those believers who had fallen asleep, were raised. And verse 53, and coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. Can you just imagine what happened here? People, it was known all throughout Jerusalem and Israel that Jesus was crucified. And as Jesus was crucified, he died, yet after three days he rose again. Not only did Jesus resurrect, but there were other believers, not all, but many, as what the Bible says, there were many who also risen up from the grave and they started to appear to people. Can you just imagine what people would be thinking? Na parang, for example, imagine a family member, they were, kumakain sila, then nagkukantuan sila. Did you hear about Jesus? Jesus was crucified and He said that He will resurrect once again. And when they were eating, eventually, kumatok yung, <laughs> yung papa nila. Nak! Nak! Parang, <laughs> uy, sino yan? But this is what Jesus said. Did you know that in the Old Testament, there was no recorded of someone who resurrected from the dead? But because Jesus promised to give us life, and Jesus said that I am the resurrection and life, and we see here that Jesus was true to His promise, that He defeated sin and death. It is to show that Jesus already has conquered death, and death no longer has power over us. The fourth miracle is this, the skeptics believed. The skeptics believe. Verse 54, When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly, this was the Son of God. You see, the centurions, the, the Roman soldiers, they were ruthless and heartless people. They were trained. They were, they were highly skilled military people. They were trained to to murder and kill, and they were very advanced when you talk about military strategies. Remember when they flogged Jesus? Kung ako pa parang, uy, tama niyan. But they just kept on going and going. Why? Because they were trained to be heartless and ruthless. Yet in this very moment where they witnessed Jesus being crucified, and they witnessed all these events and all these miracles, this is what the most skeptic and heartless people this is what they said. Truly, this was the Son of God. They themselves declared that Jesus is the Son of God. Now, we've talked about these miracles. Now, what's the implication of this to us? Three things. First is this. God made a way for us to be near Him. When the veil was torn, when the curtain was torn in two, God was presenting Himself to His people. I I am your God. And I am a God who wants to be known. 
I am your God who, gave, who pursued you and made a way for you to be in a relationship with me. People in the past, they have to offer sacrifices. They have to act religiously. They have to perform their way for them to be accepted by God. But God said, no more. There's no more curtain that divides the presence of God and the people. And you don't have to make sacrifices and efforts for you to actually be in the presence of God. What God did was to remove the veil and now us and God, we can now experience His presence. So there's no more religiosity, no more performance mindsets, no good works that we have to do for us to be loved and accepted by God. But it was God in His goodness, it was God in His wisdom who actually made a way for us to be near Him. But I want you to know and understand today, children of God, you might be here today and you're saying, Pastor, you know, I'm just happy with me going to church. I love my church. Do you love your church? Great! But it doesn't just end there with simply going to church. Understand that you can actually be in this close, loving, intimate relationship with God. God made a way to be near us. But listen, everyone, nearness with God is a gift given by Him. But intimacy with Him is a choice. Intimacy with God is a choice. And you see, here's what I can guarantee you. Your intimacy with God is what will dictate and determine how you will respond to the circumstances and the situations and the tragedies that you will experience in life. Those people who are easily anxious, and I'm saying, guys, listen to me, huh? I'm not saying that being anxious is a sin. It's not. It's a human emotional reaction that people feel. But if you're staying in your anxiety, then probably you're not actually abiding and dwelling in who God is. Because for those people dwelling and resting in the presence of God, yes, you might be worried, yes, you might be anxious, yes, you might be depressed, but you are not dictated by what you go through because you find refuge in who God is. And so I want us to understand today that nearness is a gift, but intimacy is a choice. And the question I want to ask is this, are you enjoying this intimate relationship with God? Are you drawing closer and closer to who God is that every time you pray, you're like, Lord, I don't know what I'm going through today. I don't know and I don't understand. But Lord, I have you. And Lord, you are more than enough. So this is the first implication. God made a way for us to be near Him. Secondly, second implication, Jesus' resurrection sealed our salvation. Christ's death overcame sin and death, and now we don't have to fear death because Jesus already has conquered it. The event on the cross where Jesus was crucified and resurrected changed not just the history of the world, but more importantly, our lives. Understand today that the resurrection of Jesus is a historical event. It's not a made-up story. Even historians, even atheists, as they do their research, they would always say that, yes, indeed, Jesus was crucified. And the resurrection of Jesus is a historical event that took place more than 2,000 years ago. Yet, listen to me, that one event that happened more than 2,000 years ago, it has a personal implication to you. It simply means that you have this relationship with God that you can enjoy. You have this relationship with Jesus that dictates how you relate with other relationships. That your worth is not dictated but not by what you do, not by what you possess, but by what Jesus did for each and every one of us. And it simply means that because Jesus resurrected from the dead, listen to me, our faith is alive. That's why to those who are in crisis, and to me, we are not bad people turned into good. We are dead people who are now alive in Jesus. So understand that because of what Jesus Christ has done, 
our faith is alive. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 14 says here, If Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless and so is your faith. <laughs> Can you imagine this? If Jesus did not resurrect from the dead, the Bible says that my preaching is useless. This is worthless. And your faith is also worthless. But the good news is that Jesus actually rose up from the dead. And now He's seated at the right hand of His Father. And one day, He's returning once again for each and every one of us. That's why if you are a child of God, listen to me, our response to everything that's happening around us is not fear, but of hope. You know why? Because we know for a fact that Jesus has already purchased victory for every one of us. Amen. Can we just give God praise, everyone? And here's the third implication. It is not enough that we know. We must believe. It is not enough that we just know about Jesus. We must believe that Jesus is the Son of God. There's a huge difference about knowing about God and actually knowing God. One of my greatest joys as a pastor is that I always get to meet people and, and, and really build relationship. And I'm really hoping that I would get to have this opportunity to dine in your houses and really build relationship with you. Because you know what's one of the most awkward, uh, one of the most awkward uh, experiences of, what, of being a pastor? Yung pupunta ka ng mall. Then pagpunta mo ng mall, Hi, pastor! Bro! Hey! But in your mind, Sino nga to? Sino nga to? Parang, anong, anong name nito? And the truth is, I may know things about you, and you may, know, you may know things about me, but it's different when we actually get to know each other. And I would get to hear your story how you were able to overcome your struggles and how you remained faithful despite of the losses, despite of the frustrations, despite of the death, despite of you, of you losing things and people in your life, yet you are remaining faithful. And I want you to understand that you are not just a statistic in this church. You are a person loved by God. And my prayer is that we would get to know one another. In the same way, it is not enough that we go to church and say, yeah, I'm blessed with the word today. It's not enough that we know things about God. We must believe in Him. And to actually have faith in Him, it means that everything in, in our lives revolves around who God is. Do you know what's the leading cause of atheism today? Is Christians. You know why? Christians would say something about God, but they would live otherwise. If you confess that Jesus is the Lord of your life, don't ever make that excuse that you can't change because Jesus actually came to transform us, to change us. Jesus came to transform our sinful hearts and He would turn it into a heart that would honor Him. That's why the Bible talks about sanctification. The moment that we receive Jesus Christ in our lives, we have been justified. We have been made righteous. But it doesn't end there. You cannot just say, na, Pastor, I go to church, I'm now a Christian, I worship. That's not enough. The Bible talks about sanctification. It means that we are now to walk in His ways. That we are to walk in His righteousness. That we are to enjoy the gifts that He has given us. That we are to bask in His presence every single day. Change is possible because the cross made it possible. And I want us to understand today that it's not enough that we just know the Bible, that we just know about God. To believe in God is to revolve everything in our lives to who He is. And my prayer is that we would respond in such a way that we would completely trust Him and His Word. John 3.16, it says here, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. Eternal life is given 
to those who believe in Him. That's just the requirement. You don't have to perform. You don't have to dance your way for you to be noticed by God. You simply have to believe. But to believe in Him is not just to have this empty confession or intellectual knowledge, but just like any relationship, you commit to this relationship and you grow this relationship. As I end, I just want to give to you this one important point. The day death died is the moment we have experienced true hope and eternal life. Because of what Jesus Christ has done on the cross, it changed history, it changed the world, it changed our lives. On that day that Jesus died on the cross, that He was hanging on the cross, that is the day where all of us have experienced what it means to have true hope. And not just that, we have received eternal life. The question is, do you believe? Do you truly believe in Jesus? And I'm not here to scare you that if you don't have Jesus in your life, you're going to hell. There's so much more that God is offering than, than just heaven and hell. In fact, in the life that you're going through here on earth, that is the beginning of eternal life. Where in, in the midst of struggles and pain, you can still have joy and confidence and hope and faith. Not because you're able, but because God is able. So understand today, the day death died is the moment that we have received true hope and eternal life. I want to call on the worship team. Then I want us to take this time to worship. And here's what I want us to do right now. I just want to take this time to pray. Let's all bow our heads in prayer. Lord, we're here today. Lord, we have experienced things in our lives and Lord, there are things that we do not understand. Lord, there are things that we have experienced and still we are questioning, Lord, why did these things happen to us? But Lord, everything that we go through, Lord, it, it, it aligns with the a, with a idea, with a perspective. Lord, at the very moment you came in this world and you gave yourself for us and you, you died on the cross for our sins, Lord, you have given us this joy, this victory, this freedom that we cannot find anywhere else. So Lord, we ask today that may you give us this faith to believe that everything written in your word, that everything you have said in your word is true. And so we ask today, Lord, give us the faith to believe in you, to trust in you. And so I pray, Lord, for every child of yours today. Lord, I speak faith. Lord, to those faith that's struggling, to those faith na, that's, that's becoming weak and somehow dead, I pray, Lord, that you would, Lord, Lord, that you raise up their faith, awaken their faith, cause their faith, God, Lord, to grow and Lord, to hold on to you. Lord, you, that may you revive our hearts right now. And Holy Spirit, I pray, Lord, that you would speak to every heart and remind us that you have already purchased this victory. You have already purchased, purchased, Lord, the freedom that we have been praying for. But more importantly, Lord, that you have made us alive in you. So I pray for hope. I pray for faith. Lord, to just arise in our hearts today. In Jesus' name. Can we all stand up? I want us to take this time to worship the Lord. And I want us to really worship Him and glorify Him. Come on, everyone. Can we all lift up our hands before the Lord? Lord, we commit our hearts and our lives to You. Jesus, reign over our hearts, reign over our lives. Lord, everything that we have is Yours. Our lives are Yours. So we pray today, be blessed and be glorified. Let's worship the Lord, everyone.
Christ Jesus, come on, can we just give him a mighty shout of praise, church? If you are grateful for what Christ has done for you, come on, give him a mighty shout of praise. Woo! Can we all lift up our hands before the Lord? Jesus, you are our victory. You are our banner. 
you are the one, Lord, who is sovereign. And Lord, you are seated on your throne. Lord, you are always in control. And Lord, even right now, we declare that you are trustworthy. And Lord, you are faithful. So Lord, today we just give you our lives. And everything of who we are, our lives, our resources, our pain, our past, Lord, we offer it to you. And thank you, Lord, because of the cross, we have been redeemed, we have been changed, and we are transformed day by day into who you are. So, Lord, we're letting go of what we are trying to hold on to our lives. If there's anything, God, that you are asking from us, pointing in our lives, and you're saying, my son, my daughter, give it to me. Lord, today we surrender all. Jesus, have your way. May you be glorified in our lives. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy, and we honor you. Lord, I pray, fill us with your power and fill us with your presence all the days of our lives. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Lord, we are your people. May you be glorified in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone say, Amen, Amen, Amen. Thank you everyone for worshiping with us. Have a great Sunday. God bless you all.